Hi guys, this is a very special video. In this video, I would like to stress upon the importance of USMLE and how can you integrate your USMLE tables with the rapid revision notes, whatever you have. Okay, so what I have done in this video, this is basically a video talking about the general pathology. How can you uh, revise general pathology? I'll help you revise it. I have taken the USMLE tables. I have incorporated the Robbins images and what you need to know for your exam point of view this would be helpful for anyone preparing for exams like INICET, FMG or any NEET PG exam and also for second year guys so let's get started with the topic of general pathology rapid revision okay guys so just try to understand it's very simple just open your mind and try to see and try to listen guys and I think it will help you a lot guys in revision of the topic so let's get started with the topic say first of all general pathology if we talk about so first of all what is path it's basically the study of cells and other things so we have adaptation whenever whenever guys you need to adapt in your life guys if you have some stress so you need to adapt in your life so basically there are some growth adaptation a cell take place guys okay so how i would like to explain this is the this is an example of adaptation how i would like to explain you see first of all a single camera that is a normal one guys if there is an increase in size of the camera guys that is hypertrophy if there is an increase in number guys that is hyperplasia now when there is a disorder growth it did not grow in a straight line but it moved other side that is guys dysplasia but still it's reversible and if there is uncontrolled proliferation guys that is basically cancer so uh, so see if we talk about if we see the table guys okay see normal cell reversible they are trying to adapt guys hyperplasia hypertrophy atro atrophy okay and see when they are not able to adapt guys okay so dysplasia is still reversible guys it is reversible guys you have two things that is necrosis and guys you have apoptosis okay so now coming on to the hypertrophy hyperplasia so basically hypertrophy that is increase increase in size okay hyperplasia guys is increase in number see guys you have four cells here so here also the number of cells remain the same in hypertrophy but in hyperplasia see six cells guys there is increase in number guys so uh, so if we talk about hypertrophy uh, so hypertrophy like in cardiac adaptation uh, secondary to high bp uh, if we talk about hyperplasia that is seen in endometrial hyperplasia then and also you have an example known as the benign prostate hyperplasia so all the example that i have taken is uh, from the us assembly and uh, and the uh, robins okay see this uh, we have all then atrophy so atrophy is basically when you don't use okay size decreases okay that is decrease in organ of a size okay so basically due to decrease in size and number so decrease in number is due to apoptosis and size this is the important mcq this occurs due to ubiquitin proteasome pathway okay so this is important now coming on to metaplasia so what does metaplasia means any stress that leads to change in cell type you, you are trying to adapt so you convert to a new form so see metaplasia the best example that you see is the barrett's esophagus so what happens in the barrett's esophagus I use your surgery knowledge also guys here so esophagus is normally have a uh, non-keratinized squamous epithelium okay because you have repeated stress that various food parts uh, are, are going okay so what happens guys there is a change in epithelium that is basically gastric that is intestinal columnar epithelium guys that is there so basically there is a change in epithelium okay so this change in epithelium is actually the metaplasia so this metaplasia Metaplasia is actually reversible. Okay, when you remove the stress. So, uh, so this, so this was about the Barrett's esophagus example. Now, guys, coming on, uh, this Barrett's esophagus. This you might have read in your surgery. Okay, this Barrett's esophagus progresses to the adenocarcinoma. So, this is important. Okay, now see, you have a apocrine metaplasia of breast, but there is no increased risk of cancer. But here there is an increase. So, metaplasia does not always predispose to increased risk for cancer. Then you have vitamin A deficiency that can cause metaplasia. We have talked in uh, about biochemistry. Uh, uh, module that uh, vitamin is needed for the epithelial surface like as conjunctiva covering the eyes and other thing guys so there may be metaplasia and this metaplasia this image also I have shown in my biochem wala module that is keratomalacia then you have connective tissue undergoing metaplasia that is what happens this muscle gets converted into the bone okay so that is during the process of healing so what is this known as this is known as myositis ossificans that is muscle ossificans in bone okay See, this is basically what, do you see the change in the epithelium? 
सो वॉट डू यू सी दैट इज मेटाप्लेजिया एंड दिस इज द बैरेट सिसोफेगस ओके सी दिस इज द कैरेटो मलेशिया एन यू सी हियर इफ यू कैन सी दैट इन द मसल देर इज अ बोन यू कैन सी सो दैट इज माइसाइटिस ऑसिफिकेंस नाउ कमिंग टू डिसप्लेजिया नेम ऑनली इंडिकेट दैट इज डिसऑर्डर्ड ग्रोथ ओके सो इट इज ड्यू टू द लॉन्ग स्टैंडिंग हाइपरप्लेजिया ओके एंड दिस प्लेजिया इज रिवर्सिबल वाई इफ द स्ट्रेस परसिस्ट सो इट मे गो टू इ रिवर्सिबल फर्दर यू आर ट्राइंग टू अडेप्ट ओके एंड इफ वेन यू फेल देन इट गोज टू इ रिवर्सिबल नाउ कमिंग ऑन टू ए प्लेजिया ए प्लेजिया इज देर इज फेलियर ऑफ कंप्लीट फॉर्मेशन ड्यूरिंग इम्ब्रियोजेनेसिस लाइक यूनिलैटरल रीनल एजेनेसिस वेन यू फाइंड वेन डू यू सस्पेक्ट यूनिलैटरल रीनल एजेनेसिस वेन इन द अम्लिकल कॉर्ड यू सी वन आर्ट्री एंड वन वेन नॉर्मली वॉट हैपन्स इन द अम्लिकल कॉर्ड देर इज टू आर्ट्री एंड वन वेन and how do you identify this veins have a collapse lumen so whenever you are trying to read when you come across some point guys try to correlate with the knowledge of your other subject this this is the best way you can revise your notes otherwise it's very difficult guys now coming on to the hypoplasia that cell uh, there is a decrease in cell production so you have a classical example turner syndrome that ovaries are function but not too much that is streak ovaries so turner syndrome that is 45x so now coming on to the cellular injury so first of all hypoxia is the most common cause of cell injury so i uh, think what is hypoxia basically uh, you have decreased your oxygen so atp production will decrease so think what will happen i have a flow chart i'll explain you further so what are the causes of hypoxia ischemia that is decreased blood hypoxemia and decrease o2 carrying capacity ischemia guys there are many causes i think these are common things hypoxemia that there is low partial pressure of oxygen so basically in high altitude hypoventilation okay and see this was the question asked last year carbon monoxide there is a cherry red appearance so this is the important question and the early sign is headache so every line that you come across your usmly book first aid book that is a potential mcq so please try to revise it then meth hemoglobinemia so what happens guys normally iron is iron is transported in the form of ferrous form but it gets converted into ferric form so this is seen with stress and what is the finding cyanosis with chocolate colored blood in methemoglobin so we read two color that is carbon carbon monoxide that is cherry red okay mm -hmm. see cherry red then methemoglobinemia that is chocolate colored and the treatment for methemoglobinemia is the methylene blue now coming on to the ischemia this i this probably has not been tested but i think that it's very likely to be tested okay so see in heart what is the most common side that is sub endocardium left ventricle so i think this this are some of the things that may be most likely be tested then see colon okay if you think about the colon that is the splenic flexion and the rectum okay see uh, we we said that neurons are the most vulnerable to hypoxia okay but what part of the neuron that is basically the parkenge cells of the cerebellum and the pyramidal cells of the hippocampus and the neocortex area number 3 5 and 6 okay see when there is injury guys cell try to adapt it if it fails guys it undergo reversible changes okay and if it further uh, fails guys it goes irreversible changes like necrosis apoptosis and if it fails it dies that is cell death so basically what is the aim you need to uh, continue trying till you succeed you may fail one or two time okay so if you did not do good in the inct this is not an end you need to continue working hard the aim is neat pg so continue working hard now coming on to the next one that is infarct so infarction that is basically decrease in the supply okay so what happens in infarction so you have red infarct and white infarct okay pale infarct or the white infarct so red infarct what does name indicate red means abundance of blood is there so when you will find abundance of blood blood is more here wise so more blood will be seen when you have a dual blood supply that is seen in cases of testicular torsion with multiple blood supply like liver lung intestine testes important reperfusion injury that is due to oxygen free radicals okay so this is important red but uh, is equal to reperfusion now coming on to the pale infarct pale infarct are basically pale no no blood that it will appear white so basically due to end atrial supply that do not have dual supply and see this is an example of white infarct in kidney this is a classical robin image which most likely to come see now uh, now what i said guys i'll try to de uh, demonstrate in a form of flow chart so we'll go further okay so this flow chart has uh, basically been taken from preeti ma'am notes 
सो दिस सेम थिंग हैज बिन रिटन बट मैम हैज वेरी ब्यूटिफुली डेमोस्ट्रेटेड इन द फॉर्म ऑफ फ्लो चार्ट सो दैट विल मेक इट वेरी इजी सी वॉट हैपन्स देर इज हाइपोक्सिया दैट इज डिक्रीज इन ऑक्सीजन सो वी नो दैट माइटोकॉन्डिया पावर हाउस ऑफ द सेल फॉर इट 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 सिंथेसाइज ए डी पी सो वेन यू हैव हाइपोक्सिया थ्रू माइटोकॉन्डियल डिसफंक्शन वुड बी देयर सो देर इज डिक्रीज इन ए टी पी वेन ए टी पी डिक्रीजेस सो पंप वोट वर्क सो वी नो दैट वी हैव सोडियम एंड पोटेशियम पंप थ्री सोडियम गोज आउट एंड टू पोटेशियम कम्स इन वेन दिस पंप फेल उल्टा अपोजिट विल टेक प्लेस इंस्टेड ऑफ थ्री सोडियम गोइंग आउट Three sodium will come in, and two potassium will uh, come out. So what what is eventually, guys? Inside the cell is filling up. That is, it will cause cellular swelling or hydropic change. Okay. So this is about the hydropic change that it will cause. Okay. So this hydropic change is the first morphological change. So this is the MCQ potential. Okay. Now coming on to the endoplasmic reticulum swelling would be seen. Okay. And then you have myelin figures. So this is a photo of the myelin figures. so what happens in the myelin figure see there is a concentric lamination okay so this is seen in uh, reversible cell injury and also increase in irreversible cell injury and this is made up of phospholipid and calcium this can be a potential mcq see what happens when oxygen is not there we know that there are two types of glycolysis aerobic and anaerobic anaerobic takes place in the absence of oxygen so what does anaerobic produces lactic acid so lactic acid will cause nuclear chromatin clumping to us uh, to uh, they will come together now rough endoplasmic reticulum so uh, rough endoplasmic reticulum is basically on the endoplasmic reticulum ribosomes are there so ribosomes will get detached as a result protein synthesis will decrease okay so this was about the uh, reversible cell injury see the same thing there is decrease in atp there is there is lactic acid accumulation there is cellular swelling okay there is decrease protein the same thing has been written which has been demonstrated very beautifully in the form of a flow chart now coming on to the irreversible cell damage so irreversible when do you say when extensive membrane damage is present okay or you have a mitochondrial damage so so when this things are there you can see plasma membrane damage and the mitochondrial damage so what happens during the mitochondrial damage in mitochondria you have cytochrome c so this cytochrome c basically leaks uh, leaks out inside and it, it combines with apaf1 which i will be demonstrating further see this is an mcq that is what happens here so when there is a membrane damage and the mitochondrial damage so you nucleus you have three things that is pycnosis karyodaxis and karyolysis remember the sequence it's very important pycnosis sabse pehle it will come and condense after condensation it will fragment and then it will dissolve so pycnosis that is condensation karyodaxis name only axis that is uh, fragmentation the lysis lysis means completely dissolve of see so this was mitochondrial mitochondrial permeability increase so and here also you see the amorphous density that is seen in irreversible cell injury and made up of calcium now coming on to the cell death i said if there is irreversible you may have either necrosis and you may have apoptosis so what's the difference basically what happens in necrosis necrosis is a cell death remember the for necrosis the definition is pathological cell death associated with inflammation apoptosis there is no inflammation and it may be either physio or pathological okay it may be physiological or pathological so this is very important and what is the major difference that you see see in apoptosis cell shrinks in size while in necrosis cell swell in size and then there is lysis so this is a very classical difference uh, that you may see now coming on to the necrosis see the same things uh, it has been written there or not associated with inflammation it's an inflammatory process in contrast to apoptosis and it's always a pathological process never physiological now coming on to the types of necrosis see coagulative necrosis c that is most common okay and it's seen in solid organ okay so what happens here here that here you have a wedge shaped appearance okay and here the tissue architecture is uh, is preserved and you see on microscopy you see the presence of ghost cells okay so this is important now coming on to the liquefactive necrosis so liquefactive necrosis is basically seen in two organ that is brain and the pancreas so here it was seen in all solid organs except the brain okay in brain you have liquefactive necrosis which is also known as colliquative necrosis 
okay so what do you see here uh, can you see the image of a brain that shows the presence of cavitation in cystic spaces so this is basically a dobbins image and you can see the image of a uh, coagulative necrosis that is, that shows the presence of ghost cells okay and here you have a foci of liquefactive necrosis that is necrotic material inside the debris now coming on to the there are two types of necrosis that is dry gangrene and uh, wet gangrene so what happens in dry and wet okay so uh, when the how do you this has this might have been your uh, classical path question in your second year so dry and wet so dry when there is a well defined line of demarcation that is known as dry gangrene if you have a super added infection that is known as wet gangrene okay see uh, uh, will further will further take a ta i have taken a table from the u world you guys will summarize there okay then caseous necrosis that is combination necrosis means it is the combination of what to combination of a uh, liquefactive necrosis and you and you have guys that is coagulative necrosis so a uh, caseous necrosis that is combination necrosis that is cheesy material do you see cheesy white appearance so this is seen in some classical that is tb or fungal infection like uh, like cytoplasm uh, means a uh, fungal infection uh, it's seen so what fungal infection it is seen it is seen in histoplasma crypto cryptococcus coccidiomyces okay so uh, why does it is seen in tb you know that there is a high content of lipid in the cell wall and what is that that is mycolic acid so this is important this is a micro integration so try to integrate whenever you are reading something so try to integrate thing such that it becomes easy for you to devise now coming on to the fat necrosis it's seen at two places one is enzymatic that is seen in pancreas that is acute pancreatitis and non enzymatic that is traumatic fat necrosis seen in breast so what happens there is saponification okay so uh, in saponification there is a chalky white deposit so this is an example of dystrophic calcification okay and we'll talk about the dystrophic and the metastatic calcification further see you can see this chalky white appearance so this is typical typical of fat necrosis okay now coming on to the fibrinoid necrosis what does name indicate fibrin material deposition do you see all around this fibrin material deposition so this is the necrotic damage to the blood vessel wall as a result there is bright pink staining of the vessel wall okay see and this is seen in uh, try to remember the three letter wall thing that is p a n malignant hypertension rheumatic heart disease so the three letter wall things is in fibrinoid necrosis see this is a table uh, table from the usmle endpoint see coagulative necrosis um, all the things are see most common thing seen in solid organ except brain there is release of uh, enzymes okay and there is presence of ghost cells now coming to the liquefactive so cns infarct brain wall infarct abscess formation okay and there is release of hydrolytic enzyme okay fat necrosis seen in acute pancreatitis and traumatic fat necrosis pancreatitis due to release of enzymes and chalky white deposited already done now caseous necrosis seen with tb infection histoplasma fungal infection there is chalky white appearance and we know that tb is a type of delayed hypersensitivity that it will form granuloma and what is the cause of granuloma that is interferon gamma that we'll do in our next video where we'll be discussing about the inflammation wala thing okay so gamma causes granuloma i think this makes it very easy gamma granuloma now see this is a table a table from your first aid uh, do you do you see here most of the things are done okay but if you try to read it you will still get some new point i'll show you guys see when you try to read it that fibrinoid necrosis this is an example of type 3 hypersensitivity first new point okay dry necrosis that is a coagulative necrosis wet that is a liquefactive necrosis do you see every time you try to read your first aid you will find something new see coagulative necrosis so there is a increased cytoplasmic binding of eosin stain hence you see more of red and pink color okay see now coming on to some other new point that i think you might find see you have one more organism that is no cardia so you see how important is it like you have almost read see here it combines with calcium and it calcium how does it appears on hne that is dark blue in color do you see though we have done our u world wala thing but from first aid you some you again get something new so please try to integrate it with your first aid you will get something new every time you read so that is very important
now coming on to the second type of cell death that is apoptosis okay so what happens in apoptosis what were the major thing is not associated with inflammation okay not as inflammation gone okay and instead of cell swelling here you find the cell shrinkage okay so what is the hallmark that is the nuclear chromatin condensation see this is a low power which shows cell shrinkage high power apoptotic nucleus showing chromatin condensation okay so this is important see remember in all other forms of cell injury uh, there is a feature of swelling not shrinkage so this is very important now coming on to the activation so we here in apoptosis we have caspase okay so what is this caspase c refers to the cysteine protease okay and ap aspas that is the ability of the enzyme to cleave after aspartic acid residue okay so you have in caspase you have initiation caspase and you have the ex execution caspase so for this uh, to act there are two type of pathway one is the mitochondrial pathway and one is the extrinsic pathway intrinsic pathway and the extrinsic pathway okay so this intrinsic pathway see initiation occurs by two pathway okay and execution is the common pathway so initiation is the intrinsic or the mitochondrial and extrinsic or the death receptor now how to remember is intrinsic i n m i it sound almost same n i m i almost same extrinsic D E okay and it is associated with a uh, fast ligand okay that is D E F you can remember it this, this makes it very that receptor pathway extrinsic pathway and fast ligand pathway which is also known as C D ninety five and hence what is the marker of apoptosis C D ninety five see now coming on to the apoptosis what per se cell shrinks in size there is I said about apoptosis pick and no says karyolysis and you have karyolysis see. After the apoptotic bodies uh, fall from the cell, okay, then they then there is a coating of macrophage because it is not associated with inflammation. And see, there is there you see a DNA laddering pattern. See, I have sure tried to show this is the viable cell in culture. Okay, this what you see here. Okay, so this is a step ladder pattern appearance. So why do you see step ladder? This is in classical one eighty to two hundred base pairs. okay and this is smearing pattern is seen in necrosis okay now now coming on to the mechanism of apoptosis so what we need to remember the most important thing is the cytochrome c in the mitochondria okay if you if you try to see this is a diagram of the robins okay so you have some stress sensor some pro apoptotic thing which will promote apoptosis as the name indicate and some anti apoptotic thing if you see this diagram normally what happens when the cell is fine there is no stress there is no leakage of cytochrome c by why because this anti apoptotic molecule bcl2 bcl xl inhibits the apoptosis how, how will you remember it bcl that is decrease l xl okay that is everything is decreasing means it's anti apoptotic now coming on to the sensor guys that is bs3 only protein so remember like a story bim beat bad puma noxa so you won't forget bim beat bad puma noxa so they are sensors okay so there is basically see, this release of mitochondrial protein is controlled by a balance between the pro apoptotic and the anti apoptotic molecule okay see Uh, I'll show you anti apoptotic BCL two, BCL ML MCL one. Do you see? And uh, recent according to the recent uh, update in the Robbins tenth edition, that is BH one two four anti four letter. That is BH one two four. Then pro is three letter. That is BH one two three. And what are the pro apoptotic thing? That is BAX BAK. P fifty three B X L S C U C here also S but in the end S is there means it's stimulating that is it's pro apoptotic okay see when we see initiation and uh, caspase okay I said about the two pathway can you recall guys with me one is the mitochondrial pathway which is also known as M I N I that is intrinsic what is the second pathway that is extrinsic pathway also known as death receptor pathway D E F also known as fast ligand pathway see uh, what happens uh, what happens in intrinsic and extrinsic how do you remember extrinsic pathway intrinsic i n ka reverse if you do n i that is 9 intrinsic pathway is caspase 9 extrinsic 
and x how do you re, uh, represent in roman numeral that is 10 so 8 and 10 in extrinsic and intrinsic is 9 now come and so after this is done you go to the execution cast space that is 3 6 and 7 okay this 3 6 and 7 will activate the enzyme like protease phospholipase endonuclease and this will cause the cleavage and the 180 and the 200 base pair now you understand what is the cause for step ladder pattern in apoptosis i think this makes it very easy that there is a cleavage at 180 to 200 base pair see so this was the cell basically it has apoptosis now what will happen now macrophage will come and surround it after it has detached from the cell and in this apoptotic body this is a phospholipid bilayer and there is a flipping of this phosphatidyl serine from inside to the outside which send the signal to the macrophage for phagocytosis so this phosphatidyl serine flipping can be an important mcq so see what what happened here in the intrinsic wala pathway okay so we just read about the caspase in the initiation wala caspase okay so what actually happens in intrinsic wala pathway and what happens which is also known as mito and this extrinsic wala also known as the death receptor pathway see this cytochrome c it has a very important role if it is released from the cytosol it combines with a protein known as apf1 what is apf1 that is apoptosis activating factor 1 okay which is homologous to ced4 in c elegans okay so this may be asked as a future mcq this has not been asked till now and see when when it combines there is a formation of apoptosome that is known as we like hexamer okay and this converts this is the intrinsic pathway intrinsic means caspro 9 will act and i that is pro caspase 9 will convert into caspase 9 and this can be inhibited by the smac or diablo that can be important mcq so revise it when you are going so this is iap that is inhibitor of apoptosis now coming on to the extrinsic death receptor of fast ligand pathway okay see what happens then fast and fast ligand okay so there is fadd domain formation and this is extrinsic means 8 and 10 will work e for 8 x for 10 so this will activate the pro caspase act once it's activated then it will go to execution can you guys recall the execution uh, caspase for me that is 3 6 and 7 that will cause apoptosis okay so see this is the same thing and this is cd95 okay so this is a now other mcq that may be asked from this apoptosis marker and xin5 okay you have a other annexin that if you might have read your uh, path path notes before that that there is annexin a1 that is hairy cell leukemia so recall some points of hairy cell leukemia that it is trap positive tartrate resistant acid phosphatase so whenever you read something so try to remember so how will you remember hairy cell hairs hairs get trapped so it is trap positive so try to recall when you read something try to revise uh, try to correlate molecular marker if you write apoptosis that is cd95 why because it is fast wall receptor and there is cell shrinkage there is a test known as the tunnel test this may this may be asked like as your mc okay see apoptosis very simple name only indicate a p o p p o that is positive necrosis any that is negative i think this makes it very easy okay so uh so this is the difference i think we have done every difference i can you, you can see non-inflammatory i think everything has been covered here see. so what we have talked about we have non-programmed talked about necrosis we have talked about program okay so program you have non-inflammatory and in and pro-inflammatory so now we'll be talk about this pro-inflammatory well, thing that is necroptosis and pyroptosis if you look closely at the word necroptosis don't you feel like guys this examiner or the author has just made combined necrosis plus apoptosis so it will have some features of necrosis some features of apoptosis what is the features of necrosis that it carries that is associated with inflammation okay and apoptosis that it is programmed cell death like apoptosis but it is caspase independent okay so these are the things you need to recall okay so see what happens in this pathway if you try to see so basically it is triggered by the ligation of tnf receptor one okay 
so when, when and there is viral protein okay so th this is due to the signaling of rip1 and rip3 complex okay that is receptor integrating protein and when they and when there is a signaling so atp generates atp reduces as a result there is damage and it causes necrosis okay so what are the things that you need to remember if someone talks about mcq of necro necroptosis recall some two three things that is necrosis plus apoptosis it is associated with inflammation but casp is independent okay and other things that you that is associated with casp is 8 okay and there is a recruitation of mlkl okay so these are the some of the important things that you may find in your mcq now coming on to the pyroptosis again it is pro again it is pro-inflammatory okay see so here you find the presence of in cyto, uh, cytokine uh, IL-1 and there is caspase that is 1 or 11 okay but the recent Robbins update also mentioned two caspases that is 4 and 5 okay so again it is pro-inflammatory means it was first discovered in uh, Shigella but maybe also found in Salmonella okay so uh, basically this was about uh, pro pyroptosis okay so this is an important thing you need to re recall for pyroptosis now coming on to the anoikosis so this anoiko anoikosis okay anoikis okay so this is basically a type of apoptosis so basically it means there is loss of natural environment okay for a cell think about what is the natural environment the surrounding cell is its natural environment the place where you live so there is there is a loss of the cell addition or inappropriate cell addition means the surrounding cell there is not proper addition that is now entosis that is cellular cannibalism that is eating oneself cell eat form of cell death okay and now coming on to the other topic that is autophagy autophagy that is cell eats its own content so there are three types of autophagy if you see you have chaparin mediated autophagy okay you have micro autophagy that there is an inward invigination which is known as endocytosis and you have the macro autophagy that is the major form okay so there is sequestration and transportation of protein of cytosol in a double membrane vacuole so what are the important thing that you need to recall in chaperone mediated autophagy so basically there is hsc 70 molecule and lamp 2a nothing else guys and he was the scientist who is credited with autophagy so in 2016 he received a nobel prize so who is this man he is uh, sir Osin, uh, sir yosinari oshumi okay so this may be asked as your image based question or like as a mcq okay so this was about autophagy some M mcq that you need to remember marker lc3 Genes ATGS5 increase the risk of TB, but the main gene is ATG1. Okay. Now coming on to the stains. Okay. So what are the stains that you need to read in your path? Okay. And what are the intracellular accumulation that you will come across? Okay. So this is that uh, tab um, table which, where we have tried to combine most of the stains that you will come across in your entire path. Okay. See glycosan. So glycosan stains way, uh, like coffee sari things. Okay. Remember this glycosan pass is pass positive diastase sensitive. So this is a this is a very important thing that you need to know. Okay. Now lipids. Lipids you have can have Sudan black, oil red o, and you have osmium tetroxide. Okay. Uh, oil red o name only indicate guys oil is there. Osmium O for oil and Sudan black B. Okay. Now calcium. How will you remember calcium ke stain? Al that is algerin. Then Cl that is calcine. Okay. And you have a stain that is von casa. Okay. So we need to remember the color for von casa. Do you see this is a von casa stain? So what does it, this stain? That is black. So how do you remember casa? Remember kala. Okay. And kala is black. So that is it is stain black. Then hemosiderin. That is pulse Prussian blue. So you will find blue blue deposits. Okay. That is pulse Prussian blue wall stain. Then other thing that you need is melanin. Okay. So melanin. So where is melanin present? In the stratum basal. Okay. So stratum basal. So this is positive for Mason Fontana and Scomol blue where you will see blue color. And can you recall guys immunohistochemistry for me? That is HMB 45 positive. Now coming on to the collagen. So this is basically the Mason trichome. Do you see three color? So you have muscle. Remember Mr. Muscle is red. Collagen is blue and nuclei and other things appear pink. So you have three color here. 
नाउ म्यूसिन स्टेन एसिडिक म्यूसिन इज स्टेन बेस्ट बेस्ट काम इन सो ओके एंड फॉर म्यूको पॉलीसेक्राइड यू हैव एल्शियन ब्लू कैल्शियम ऑलरेडी डन कॉपर इट्स रूबेनिक एसिड ओके इंसुलिन नॉट रिक्वायर्ड एंड आयरन हिमोसिडिन ऑलरेडी डन ओके दिस पास इज पॉजिटिव फॉर लॉट ऑफ थिंग विल कम अक्रॉस द लिस्ट फर्दर ओके विल डिस्कस यर इन दिस वीडियो ओनली प्लाजमोडियम इट्स बेसिकली द रोमनोस्की फैमिली वाला स्टेन एच पाइलोरी दिस इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दैट इज वॉर्थ इन स्टारी स्टेन दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वेन एवर यू थिंक समथिंग ब्लैक थिंक अबाउट सम सिल्वर स्टेन दे आर टॉकिंग अबाउट देन माइक्रो प्लाज्मा एम डी ओके दैट इज डाइन स्टेन ओके देन एच बी एस ऑर्गेनिज्म दिस इज बेसिकली एच बी एस दिस वन सो दिस इज बेसिकली एच बी एस एंटीजन इज ऑल्सो नोन एज ऑस्ट्रेलिया एंटीजन सो दिस इज द इम्पॉर्टेंट एम सी क्यू दैट मे बी आस्क टू यू ओके दिस एच बी एस एंटीजन इज ऑल्सो नोन एज ऑस्ट्रेलिया एंटीजन एंड वेयर डज इट कम इन द डायग्नोसिस ऑफ हेपेटाइटिस इफ यू माइट है यू हैव अ स्टे नोन एज और ओके और सिंसिकाटा ओ आर दैट इज ऑर्गेनिज्म हेपेटाइटिस बी न्यूमोसिस्टिस कैरेना सो यू हैव न्यूमोसिस्टिस कैरेना दैट इज मैथामिन सिल्वर ओके दिस गोज मोर इन टू द माइक्रो वाला थिंग वी वोट डिस्कस यर मच देन यू हैव अ इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग दैट इज अमाइलोइड दैट इज क्लासिकल स्टेन दैट यू नीड टू नो यू कैन नॉट फॉरगेट दैट इज कॉन्गोरेड ओके then uh, then the new uh, then for neurons guys you have the nissel stain this in axon this you this stain you will read in your alzheimer's disease where you find the presence of neuritic plaque and other thing that is bialowski silver see this one is the stain neuritic plaques neurofibrillary tangles if you see here so this is important here now myelin that is lugol fast blue do you see so this is basically used for demyelinating disorder to know where there is loss of myelin for muscle you have a pth stain so what is pth that is phosphotungstic acid hematoxylin stain do you see hematoxylin stain then for dna it appears pink in color how can we remember dna act as a fuel for the body okay all the nuclear material anything that is dna fuel gen stain okay see this we have talked about the past stain past stain is a variety of thing what are something glycogen if you see okay starch म्यूसिन बेसमेंट मेम्ब्रेन फंगाई ओके थाइरॉइड कोलाइड कॉर्पोरा माइलेशिया वेर डू यू सी कॉर्पोरा माइलेशिया इन द प्रोस्टेट ओके डसल्स बॉडी दिस स्टेन्स मेजेंटा और रेड इन कलर एंड न्यूक्लियर स्टेन ब्लू इन कलर सो दिस इज इंपॉर्टेंट यू कैन सी ऑल द पास पॉजिटिव दिस ग्लाइकोजन इज सीन इन इविंग्स का सार्कोमा कैन यू रिवाइज गाइज इट्स ट्यूमा मार्कर डैट इज सी डी नाइनटी नाइन और मिक टू so guys when you have read your entire patch whenever you come across something please try to revise uh, this also shows the presence of rosette so try to revise that will help you correlate the thing then you have alcyon blue okay see you uh, see the photo okay so this is this you can see this alcyon blue positive okay now coming on to the alcyon blue pass stain okay then you have muci caramine stain that is seen in cryptococcus what is one other stain of cryptococcus that is a negative stain that is india ink stain okay see then for amyloid you have the congo red okay so some point for um, congo red under polarizing microscopy you have a apple green birefringence this is a amorphous eosinophilic material okay because it appears more of pink hence eosinophilic okay see do you see a myeloid congo red under the light microscope but if you come and uh, come to the polarizing wala light you have apple green biodifferential lipids we have already done oil red o and sudan black b okay this is demonstrated with frozen section this is your previous year question see do you see oil red o okay so guys uh, now coming on to some this u assembly wala table see guys this we have already done okay but if you see guys some of the things will always be there see uh, this is a rapid revision reversible cell injury myelin in figures okay and irreversible you have amorphous density uh see uh this is again but if you see the extensive pathway they have written a syndrome that is autoimmune lymphoproliferative syndrome that is defective fast ligation so you will have lymphadenopathy hepatosplenomegaly and autoimmune cytopenia though we have already done but do you see we have something new this i have already uh, said about the new things that you find in this table so this is important see this uh this here what do you see in this splenic flexure it's the griffith point okay and in the recto sigmoid this is the sudac point okay this is important purkinje cells of the cerebellum and neocortex okay see some other uh, important thing that you see how does this um, 
as a carbon tetra tetrachloride this you might have read in your in your uh, liver wala chapter okay so basically this causes decrease in apoprotein synthesis and centrilobular necrosis so this may be mcq see what are this uh, free radicals what are the things that helps to decrease free radical you have some enzyme that is catalase superoxide dismutase glutathione peroxidase and antioxidant ace you might have seen this as a frequently circulating questions on your telegram group okay so this is very important and you have some carrier protein like trans fatin and celluloplasmin okay see some other things that are important okay uh what happens here see stem cells of rapidly regenerating tissue are most susceptible to radiation injury okay now coming on to the types of calcification that is dystrophic and metastatic so how i have remembered dystrophic is basically dead or fit uh, disease wala tissue okay so when the tissue is dead or something guys okay so uh, basically serum calcium level will be normal but here everything is fine guys so it's usually abnormal so it's secondary to some hypercalcemia any cause that increases calcium so sarcoidosis हाइपर पैराथाइरोडिज्म क्रॉनिक किडनी डिजीज आई थिंक यू कैन सी ओके एंड ही आर डिस्ट्रोफिक कैल्सिफिकेशन दिस एग्जांपल्स आर गिवन ओके दिस सी यू हैव अ पिगमेंट नोन एज लाइपोफ्यूशन ओके दिस लाइपोफ्यूशन यू कैन सी द पिगमेंटेशन ओके सो दिस इज नोन एज वियर एंड टीयर पिगमेंट ओके सो बेसिकली दिस इंक्रीजेस विद एज इट मे बी डिपॉजिटेड इन हार्ट कोलोन लीवर ओके एंड अदर ऑर्गन so amyloidosis i think you might have also seen so this is basically the congo green biofringes see congo red stain okay and uh, that is orange on non polarized light and apple green biofringes on polarized light okay see guys so this was all about the first chapter that is general path so guys in this video i have tried to integrate your usmd i have tried to integrate the robins and i have tried to revise such that it helps you for your neat pg or your ini ct exam or your fmg exam okay so if you like it guys please do comment like and share if you like the upcoming series i'll continue with next chapter also so please do comment thank you guys for watching the video please like comment share and subscribe to the channel happy learning